Hey guys, in this episode of Webio Westward, we are going even further west to the shores of Lake Erie. This particular proposal is of a high-speed diesel line connecting the Cleveland area with the Detroit area. Now before we get into the specifics of this line, I would like to say that this line is vital to the area. Not only will it merely connect Cleveland to Detroit, but it will also connect various places in between and also serve as a commuter line near the two big cities. In addition, this line will be one of the parts of the eventual New York to Chicago line and that will utilize this line in diesel trains. So before we get into the specifics, I would like to just tell the characteristics of the line. The line will utilize diesel trains running at 230 kilometers per hour. Now you may be thinking, that's a little too fast for a diesel train, right? Well, if the British could build 200 km per hour diesel trains in the 1970s, there's no reason why we can't build them to go at 230 km per hour today. And if you want an empirical transformation, 230 km per hour is exactly 143.25 miles per hour. So it's pretty fast, especially for a diesel train. And the fact that they are diesel trains will not make the need for catenary installation along this entire line, thus greatly reducing the cost to actually implement it. Now the line's eastern terminus is actually not in Cleveland. It's in a suburb called Painesville, which is about 30 miles east. All these stations are located near an existing expressway interchange in which people can quickly change off of certain routes such as Route 90 and Route 2 onto the new higher speed line. Stations are spread apart at about 10 mile intervals though these intervals do get larger in very rural areas and smaller close to cities. So 10 miles west is East Lake, then Euclid, then East Cleveland, then Cleveland. The reason I group these all stations together into one part is because these are this is like a main urban band of Cleveland that goes right along the coast. Many people from this area right here commute in jobs in the actual central Cleveland area. And taking this line, even when there's no traffic on the existing highways here, will still be faster as the trains will go up to 230 kilometers per hour. The stations are about 5 to 10 miles apart so I think that's a perfect distance to allow both high-speed travel and local connectivity which I think is a very big part to make a line successful. You don't want a line just to connect downtown to downtown, you want intermediate stops as well but you need to specifically place these intermediate stops to serve high need areas and keep them a certain distance apart and for this line I think 5 to 10 miles is the optimal distance. In Cleveland Central, it will connect to the existing light rail system to serve the rest of the downtown as well as the sports venues and various other activities available in Central Cleveland. After that, the line will continue to Lakewood and then to Cleveland Airport, which I think is a very important station just because Cleveland Airport is actually a pretty heavily used airport for the size of the Cleveland city so many people will use this airport for inter-regional midwestern travel and I think putting a stop right next to the airport will allow easy connectivity between planes and trains. Oh yeah while we go to the next station which is like 15 miles away this line is already used by Amtrak but the current Amtrak trains are really slow and there are not enough stations along the line to actually make this line practical. This line will be faster from end to end and it will serve more stops due to these higher speed diesel trains that should be implemented. Also, curve straightening is not really needed that much. The biggest curves tend to be really close to stations anyways and in the case in which a heavy hard curve does appear, curve straightening can be easily implemented much easier than other lines such as the New York to Boston high speed line in which between Springfield and Worcester that was some extreme curve straightening involving tunnels and whatnot. This is very simpler 
curve straightening. So Elyria is next. Then Vermilion, which is not a station on current Amtrak, so these people will get new rail access as well as the surrounding region. Then 15 miles west is Sandusky, home of Cedar Point. I think this will be a big tourist boon for the area, connecting many parts of the Midwest to Sandusky in this one line. The next station is Port Clinton, also along the shores of Lake Erie, and after that is all the way Toledo. Toledo is already a decently large station, the existing Amtrak line, and it will continue to be a big station on this new line as well. Toledo is a fourth largest city in Ohio and I think that it will be a vital connection to make this line to other big cities such as Cleveland and Detroit. Toledo to Cleveland on this line will only take 48 minutes and from Toledo to Detroit will only take 36 minutes. So you can tell that this line will drastically reduce travel times. Now before we go north this line will actually have to go at a relatively slow speed to make it around this curve but there would not be much room for it to accelerate out of Toledo anyways so it won't be that big of a deal. This line right here would be a future proposal west to connect the final Chicago to New York line. In the next couple web videos actually I'll be doing segments of the New York to Chicago line and when connected together you'll have a line going all the way from Chicago to New York. Right now, I'm not proposing any regional, ex regional high speed and express high speed, but probably at that time, that can be easily implemented with stops at the bigger stations serving all trains and stops at the smaller stations only serving the regional high speed trains. Next stop is Toledo North, which is right next to Interstate 75 and serves a vast area of northern Toledo, Ohio. Then it enters Michigan, straight, straight segment, Monroe Station is a first stop, around 15 miles later Rockwood, Rockwood is like considered to be the southern end of the Detroit suburbs. And after that, it will be at Wyandotte, and after Wyandotte the stations will become closer together as it will serve as more of a commuter line in the Detroit area but it will still be relatively high speed faster than driving at least even under normal traffic conditions to downtown Detroit it will go to River Rouge Detroit West and now I would like to point out something the existing Amtrak Detroit station is three miles to the north I made this line go directly to the center city so this would be much more utilized by people. So what I did, I proposed a tunnel to connect the final mile or so from where the line ends at the old Detroit terminal to right under the convention center in which Detroit station will be located. As of now, I've not directly proposed a northern link, but I think a northern link can be easily implemented by just connecting this tunnel to the various lines serving the northern suburbs of Detroit and that's it there's a line from Detroit to the eastern suburbs of Cleveland this is just one part of many parts of the future Chicago to New York high-speed line which would take too long in one web view and it wouldn't really serve all the specifics so I think this is good for now next web view we'll look at another segment of the Chicago to New York high-speed line. Thank you and goodbye.